The Recar Radiance R40, a.k.a. the 40 Series Premium, is the flagship upright from Recar. It has all the latest bells and whistles, and it should because it retails for an eye-popping $1,599. We bought one recently and put it through all of our usual tests to see how it compared to other vacuum cleaners and to see if it was worth the extremely high cost. So links in the description, and let's get started. Before we get to the tests, we need to go over the aforementioned bells and whistles, since there are quite a few. But you can skip right to the tests if you go to the timestamp on the screen or in the description. Let's start with the so-called tandem air technology. This basically means that the Recar R40 has two motors. First, they have a direct air motor, and while direct air motors provide excellent airflow for deep cleaning carpets, they don't have enough suction for above floor cleaning like with attachments and tools. The Kirby vacuums are an example of direct air motor vacuums. They have great airflow but extremely low suction power. Ricard solved this problem by adding a second, more common, clean air motor, which also helps with floor cleaning, but it primarily provides more suction for the use of tools, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. There's a lot of metal on the unit where it counts, like the bottom plate is stainless steel and the brush roll is extruded aluminum with stiffer than normal bristles. And when you combine these elements with the direct air motor, you get pretty much unparalleled carpet agitation. Ricard dealers will often use black carpet and sand like this to show its agitation, and I have to admit, it's pretty cool, and I personally can't remember seeing agitation better than this. It has a lot of sensors, like dirt detection sensors, which light up when it senses the carpet is still dirty, which is actually a bit more useful with a vacuum that can actually pick up hidden dirt, like the R40. It also has more traditional full bag and brush roll blockage sensors, as well as bright LED lights. It has a switch which will turn off the brush roll for vacuuming hard floors, as well as a six-position height adjustment, which pretty much covers any length or thickness of carpet. Its filtration system is more elaborate than I've personally seen before. In addition to using a HEPA bag, it's a sealed system with a pretty large post-motor HEPA filter. It also has a granulated charcoal filter, which is pretty much the same quality as our Dyson Air purifiers. Basically, the charcoal filter is there to reduce odors, which is a nice touch. As far as attachments, I'll start with a telescopic aluminum wand, which I really liked. It was very easy to remove and to use. I really liked the unique way it extended, and it was the right size for most people if they wanted to use it with the hard floor tool. It also came with two genuine horsehair attachments, a kind of double-sided dusting brush for different applications, as well as a combo upholstery tool and a crevice tool. It came with a huge suction-powered turbo tool for carpeted stairs or upholstery, and a really well-designed hard floor tool, which, in addition to horsehair, it has a removable dusting pad as well. It has the longest cord I've ever seen on a non-commercial upright at 40 feet, and when added to the 17 foot hose, it's one of the best, if not the best, cleaning radiuses for an upright vacuum. I'll finish up with the features by mentioning that it has a crazy long 8 year warranty and a really good service plan where the vacuum store you bought it from will do a lot of the free maintenance, but you should check with your local vacuum store for the exact details of that plan. Alright, so now we know what it's supposed to do, and let's see how it actually does in the tests. We started with some standard airflow and suction tests. We measured 72 CFM of airflow at the hose, and the airflow at the cleaner head was 64 CFM in hard floor mode, but when you hit the carpet button, which I assume engages the second motor, the airflow at the head jumped up to 76 CFM. We also measured the suction at 80 inches of water lift. So interpreting these numbers requires some context. The most impressive number here is its airflow at the cleaner head in carpet mode, where it's better than just about any premium vacuum on the market. In fact, it's significantly better than your typical Sharks or Dysons or even SIBO. But there are two vacuums that I know of that do better here, the Kirby Avalier 2 and the Kenmore Elite. The Kirby does way better because it has an absolutely massive direct air motor. But remember the downside of direct air motors is their lack of suction. We measured the Kirby suction at only 38 inches compared to 80 on the Ricar. The other one, the Kenmore Elite, is here because it's the only other vacuum I know of that also includes two motors. In the case of the Kenmore, though, it has better airflow as well as better suction. Despite this, the Kenmore hasn't done well in our deep clean tests on carpet, which is an issue for another video. Next up was the pickup test. First was carpet, where it really shined on the very thick, almost shag carpet that we use. It had absolutely no trouble with fine to extra large debris and required very little adjustment to do this. I think I had it set on its third setting the entire time, and it just was really impressive. 
In terms of deep cleaning carpets, it was a whole new ball game. So we normally use a very thick medium pile carpet for this. Occasionally, really good vacuums will find more than the 100 grams of sand I embed for the test and come up with scores like 101 or 102% of the sand picked up. I tested this twice with the Recar, getting 105 and 113%. So yeah, it was finding sand that other vacuums have been leaving behind. So I thought it would be interesting to see how it did on the 9 16 inch super long almost shag carpet. I don't normally do deep clean tests on this carpet because it's so hard for vacuums to do. For example, the Auric XL, which scored only 87% on the regular deep clean test, only picked up 63% of sand on the super long carpet. So I tested it with the Ricard R40 and it scored 133% on the shag carpet, despite me having vacuumed the carpet before the test with the Ricard. It still found an additional 33 grams of material at the bottom of that carpet. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It seems that Ricard claim that it finds dirt other vacuums miss is really true. On hard floors, it did better than I was expecting. As I said, it does have a brush roll shutoff switch, which is necessary because if you leave the brush running on hard floors, it will scatter debris. With the height set for hard floors, it did good with fine debris, including heavy debris like sand, and even medium-sized debris. It even got Cheerios as long as the height was adjusted. The limit was Fruit Loop-sized debris, though, because even though it would adjust that high, the airflow is too reduced at that height to pick it up. But it was way better than similar full-sized uprights with large debris and of course for those situations you would probably just use the wand which again is very easily accessed and has more than enough suction for the job. It also did way better than I was expecting on edge cleaning both from the front and from the side. It did really good with hair and pet hair on carpets, but on hard floors, because you have to turn the brush roll off, it tended to get stuck on the brush. The unlikely hero here was the hard floor tool. I say that because I normally think these hard floor tools are terrible with hair, but this one was better than average, with only minimal amounts of hair caught in the bristles. The hard floor tool still has snow plowing issues with larger debris, but literally every hard floor tool I've ever tested has the same problem. We tested its filtration in several ways, including a 5 micron fog particle test, which it passed with no visible fog, which is somewhat rare, but also expected with a vacuum in this price range. It also passed the dry particle test, where we use a special kind of test dust and a particle counter in a closed room, and it scored a 60, which is terrific. It needs a score under 100 to pass. To give you context, a bad vacuum will score about 4,000 here, and a vacuum with no filter at all will score about 20,000. So 60 means it's really good at keeping the dirt in the vacuum and not in the air. It was a little loud at 79 dB, about the same as the Dyson Multifloor, which is also pretty loud. One of the main downsides to the Recar is that it's pretty heavy at 22.5 pounds. Only the Kirby is heavier and not by much. The Kenmore Elite is lighter despite it also having two motors. The handle weight was only 3.1 pounds though, which is actually less than the Dyson V11 at 4.5 pounds. And in my opinion, handle weight is more important than overall weight as long as you're not having to drag it upstairs. That being said, it's a beast and it doesn't have a swivel, which means you're not exactly going to be doing precision vacuuming with the Recar 40 Series Premium. That being said, I love that because of the weight, you can use the hose and attachments without the vacuum moving around, which is really useful if you love using attachments. So let's call that a silver lining. So when trying to figure out if it's worth $1,600, realize the Recars are mostly sold in local vacuum stores and you'll almost always get a significant portion of that price knocked off. I got a great deal on mine and I'll link the retailer I used in the description. I'll also link to the Recar website where you can order online, but you do have to pay the full retail price if you do. So like anything, the question of worth is entirely subjective. It's a super premium vacuum cleaner, which has done almost everything right. It's made in the USA, it provides unparalleled warranty and service, so taking that into account, I think the cost can be justified, especially if carpet deep cleaning is a priority for you. For me though, I have more hard floors and carpet deep cleaning is less of a concern for my situation. I also don't tend to use warranty or repair services or attachments, so for me it wouldn't be worth it, but for others it certainly could. Could be. Consider a subscription to Vacuum Wars to keep up with all the latest vacuums, robot vacuums, and carpet cleaners, and thanks for watching.